All right. Rumor has it we're live. Uh, we're going to see how it goes. So if you're if you're tuning into this video, uh, you know, not live, you're watching it a little bit later, go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. We'll get to the good stuff, but we're going to give people a, a few minutes to roll in and get that uh, notification coming across their screens. Uh, but before we get to the good stuff, Tashaka, you got to uh, you get to watch the entire Apple announcement meeting earlier this week. Before we get to you know any of the the new tech and and whatnot, how was the experience where you know everything was all COVIDy and uh, remote and all that? Okay, for me, the selfish part of it. It was terrible because I would much rather be in Cupertino, <laughs> California, for the week, for the weekend, for a couple of days. Uh, you know, personally experiencing being in the theater. I have been there before for uh, when they made their Apple a TV announcement, the oh, initial wow. TV Plus announcement. Uh, I was in the, uh, well, I believe, Steve Jobs Theater at, at the spaceship, and it's it's an amazing campus. The theater is amazing. So yeah, on a personal level. It was bad because I want to be there. I, on, on a from a consumer level, and as a person who's been in in broadcast for twenty five some odd years, it was beautiful. It was a heck of a production. As I'm watching it, the transitions when they would go from speaker to speaker, and they'd have these sweeping shots where they fly across the campus from one room to the to the next, and you were going from one uh, side of the spaceship to the other. It was incredible quality. I mean, I totally and thoroughly enjoyed it, and the effects were incredible. So, from a viewing perspective and, and knowing what it took for them to get those kind of transitions and do all that, I was highly impressed. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I I uh, tend not to enjoy the those kind of press conference announcements uh, as much, but Apple puts on. They always put on a good show. I watched the one, I think it was last year. Yeah, it would have been last spring or summer when they announced Apple TV Plus and they trotted out all the celebrities who had made Apple TV Plus shows. And uh, and I'll be honest, I was really excited about the service and about the shows. But after a while, it was like the eighth show that they, they trotted out, you know, Oprah and Reese Witherspoon. And after a while, I was just like, all right, I, I think I'm done with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. all right. So uh, now that we've had a few minutes, we've had a few people roll in. I will say for those who are here, if you have any questions about the Apple announcements, uh, Tashaka was there for the whole thing. So he may be able to answer some of those questions. But for now, let's talk about the device that you got some hands-on time with. And that's the new Apple Watch. Uh, did you get anything else that they had announced yet, uh, earlier this week? Or is that the only one? To, for at this time, uh, I have only uh, the Apple Watch Series Six. So okay. yeah, yeah, I the have brand that, new one. The brand new one. They sent me the Apple Watch Series Six along with uh, one of their other big announcements as it pertains to the watch was the new Solo Loop band. So they sent me uh, four pairs of the Solo Loop bands: the the braided Solo Loop band and the silicon solo loop band uh okay. hello joker i see you in the comment so <laughs> they sent all of that and uh so yeah so that's what i've been uh testing and have had in my hands or on my wrist as it were uh for the last uh 24 hours plus nice and so give me uh just high level first impressions how are you feeling about it these days Oh, we're losing your sound a little bit, Tashaka. It is definitely better than the previous gen, um, than the Series 5. But I think, as, as often is the case, you know, if you bought a Series 5, you just bought that last year. Yeah. So if we're talking high level, is it worth the upgrade for some people who are early adopters? You know, maybe. Uh, for generally most people, I think people who are like how, on a series three, those are the people that are probably looking to upgrade to the series six. People who are on a series four, you know, so if you bought a series five, you're probably not looking to upgrade right now. Not worth uh, the jump. Yeah, but if you're on anything prior to the series five, 
you're probably looking, you, you may be uh, considering that. And it's definitely um, a worthy upgrade. And I think, and again, keeping high level for a moment here, I think one of the, the compelling arguments for the Series 6 is in a pandemic world, um, having the SPO2, the, the pulse oximeter, or the blood oxygen uh, sensor is um, a smart move because you know one of the things you hear about with COVID with people who have COVID is you know they have trouble breathing and early on I heard that some of that issue may be a result of low blood oxygen and so I think in in this pandemic environment it's it's a smart move. Yeah, yeah. So it, what would you say, what would you pull out as your number one coolest new feature, you know, e even new from the the Series 5? You know, honestly, something that I wouldn't use now, if, if it had been 10, 15 years ago, I would consider. And that is so, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. There's some, there's a part of it that I would absolutely use now, and, and I am going to. And that is a family setup. Mm. This to me was the most compelling function or feature of the watch, um, which is not necessarily a feature of, of, of Series 6, but of Watch OS 7. Yeah. Um, and it's just introduced with the introduction of Series 6. But family setup allows you for the first time to be able to set up an Apple Watch for a family member without them having to own an iPhone. So if you want to purchase a watch, uh, that's a pricey gift for a, yeah. a kid. Um, but for me, more importantly and more compellingly, if you want to purchase a watch for an aging parent who maybe is on a different device other than iPhone and they don't want to make the switch and learn, um, they you can now purchase this for a parent, grandparent, and set them up on it. And, and, you know, you've got the excellent features like fall detection, uh, mm -hmm. the mapping functionality. So now you have a, a location for your uh, parent or the grandparent. Uh, you have fall detection for them. And it's all controlled from your phone without them having to learn a new phone, new device. And uh, you, can, you can control it from that. And then um, getting back to the one I said I probably wouldn't use because my children are all in college now is when you set up a watch for your child, um, with family setup comes something called uh, Family uh, Cash App. It's either Family Sharing Cash or Family Cash App. And what that is, is it allow, it's basically allows you to use Apple Cash to give your kids an allowance through their Apple Watch. Wow, okay. So if you have a kid, they've got the Apple Watch, they're out and about, you know, maybe your city is not on lockdown anymore, and they're out and about, and they, dad, I need $10. You can Apple cash them $10 to the watch, and they can use Apple Pay on the watch to you know, pay for things. So okay. I actually really like that. Um, the family features are, look really promising, look very strong. Um, I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about Fitness Plus, because I've been wanting to get into yoga. So, oh, really? Yes, I, I have been, I've been wanting to get into yoga, to Shaka, I would pay to watch you do yoga. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I may, uh, I may do some Twitch, Twitch to Shaka yoga <laughs> sessions. I may do that. It may be a thing. Very so, nice. Well, I want, I want to come back to yeah. the what was it, Fitness Plus? I want to come back to that. But we did get a, a good question here. Um, and, and just as a reminder to anybody else watching, go ahead and throw your questions in the chat, and we will see about addressing those. But Martin asks. As an Apple user, why do I need this product if I have a phone? And and this kind of goes back to not just the Series 6, but the Apple Watch generally. If I've got this phone in my pocket all the time and I can pull it out and check the time, I can text, I can, you know, whatever. Who cares? Why do I need this watch strapped to my wrist? Valid question. And, and I think it it's a valid question that spans all wearables. Right. Uh, why do we need this? Why do we need this? Why is this extra screen necessary? What I can tell you is after having tested uh, dozens of watches and been playing with them for a few years now, um, it, we, we keep getting, we keep moving further and further away from the core phone. 
So when I bought my first cellular phone that made pretty much phone calls and T9 predictive text, yeah. um, the 90% of what I did on that phone was call because texting was a chore. And, 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 we, and you had to pay about 10 cents a text. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so, but once texting came in, I called less and I texted more. So I moved away from the core function of a phone to now a, a messaging, a text messaging device. And then once uh, on my next telephone, we got GPS. I used it more for that. And so there's been this progression to me of moving toward more natural um, interface with your communications. And, and ultimately the goal eventually is to get to Star Trek where pretty much everything is voice communication. <laughs> so yeah. this is a really kind of long meandering way to answer that question to say that I've inter I interact with my phone less now that I have the watch. Um, I leave my phone at home when I go to the gym. Um, when, when pre COVID, I would run to the gym every day um, at uh, every day to go work out. The gym was across the street from my job. I'd leave my phone at work and I use an app called Strong, which is a fitness uh, uh, journal diary. I could do everything on my watch that I could do on my phone without having to have a phone. So music on my watch, everything on my watch. So I have this little thing strapped to my wrist here that I can ever do everything with instead of having to lug the phone. So it really is just a matter of with each new generation of interface, we're kind of moving away from that core phone functionality to interfaces and interactions with our devices that maybe at one time were more novel, maybe more fu futuristic, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that is what I feel the use case is. And, and for me, honestly, I see in the chat, there are people making comments about watches. I never stopped wearing a watch either. I love a good chronograph. So <laughs> I, I am, well, what is it? Uh, I am a chronophile. So All right. I actually never stopped wearing a watch. But again, it is, it is watches, smart watches are a great second screen for your phone. You'll find that you take your phone out less, that you do more from the watch. And, you know. Yeah, that, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you go back to the the cell phones in the 90s that my parents carried around and and those were so cool at the time but yeah like you said you didn't use them much and now our phones like if you don't have a phone it's difficult to function in modern american society right you have to have a phone and i wonder if this is just you know if the last 10 years has been the 90s of wearables so to speak if that makes sense right and uh, eventually it'll, it'll come up, come to be the case that you know, you'll have, uh, was, was it Amazon that's got this ring now, that this wearable oh. ring? Yeah. Steve, uh, Steve, another contributor on our channel, he uh, demoed that on his uh, other YouTube channel. Uh, and I think he's going to do that for us as well. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Um, but yeah, wouldn't it be cool if uh, this is just, you know, one more iteration and them getting all that technology onto the head of a pin so that we can wear it wherever, have all these other use cases? Well, with is the processes that they've that they're creating for these uh, processors, these system on chips. I mean, with this last one, when they were describing it at the Apple event, they basically said this five nanometer process uh, 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 got their transistors to the to to the atomic level. They were, you know, essentially the size of atoms. So, yes, when you talk about getting things onto the the head of a pin, the head of a needle, we are actually <laughs> not there. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're there. So, you know, you know, there, there you go. Oh, man, it's a it's a cool time we live in. All right. So, Tashaki, you've got the watch on your wrist right now, right? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. Yep, yep. There we go. There we go. So how's oh, yeah. the is the form factor any different compared to the Series 5? Here. No. And that is actually what I really like about it is that the form factor has really stayed the same. It hasn't gotten much bigger. Um, and one of the things I really like about the Apple Watch is the fact that it really sits low on your wrist. I've been testing some other watches lately and they're more traditional and, and they're thicker. And so when I sleep with this one at night, um, it's not a hindrance. It doesn't feel like I have this 
big extra thing on my arm. It is quite comfortable. Um, I see uh, Streaming Junkie said cool blue rubber wristband. This is actually, so when they announced this, one of the things they announced with the Series 6 is the single loop band. The single loop band has no clasp and it, attempt, it essentially turns the watch into a bracelet uh, watch. Like, you know, many other bangles or bracelets you have, watch bands that you can buy aftermarket. So this is the, the braided, uh, sil the braided loop uh, bracelet, and this is cloth with silicone fibers weaved Here, inside. Hold that up real close. Let's see if we can see that braided quality. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, it's really tightly woven. Um, it is. It feels high quality. It's it's a nice wristband, and then you have. And I, I prefer generally well, and, these because they breathe. I exactly. I was just gonna say. Uh, he said it's cool blue rubber wristband, and luckily it's not. Rubber wristbands drive me crazy because you sweat like crazy through them, um, and so that sounds a lot more comfortable than a rubber one. Yeah, and this is a silicon one. Now I generally don't like Apple sports band, and and it's not Apple sports band. I don't like any silicon band, whether it's for any of the Android watches, Apple Watch, Fitbit, any of them because it doesn't breathe. So this was actually more comfortable to sleep with last night because this one doesn't fit me perfectly. Mm. And, and because it's smooth, because it's cloth, there's no friction. The silicon has friction. There's some friction in the material. So it doesn't move around on my wrist even though it's the same size. These bands come in several sizes. I don't recall off the top of my head how many but like this is a size eight and they sent me a size nine. Uh, so I don't know if it starts off at size one, two or three, where uh, I don't recall where the sizing actually begins, uh, but I could actually use a size seven instead of the size eight they sent me. Mm. Uh, one of the things that should be noted with my first impressions is I really wanted to give, give this a, a thorough once over with the pulse oximeter. So what I did is I went to the, um, a pharmacy and purchased a pulse oximeter here. And uh, so I purchased one of these and these are your standard pulse oximeters that you see in a hospital where you know you put them on the end of your finger and you turn it on and it gives you a, a blood oxygen, an SpO2 reading. Um, these devices, uh, because they have to be in some cases registered medical devices, they have to provide for you a, an accuracy measurement, an accuracy mm -hmm. reading. So this is accurate within plus one or two points. Apple does not have the pulse oximeter, the blood oxygen meter in here registered as a medical device. So they actually will not tell you, cannot tell you how accurate it is. It is for health and wellness only. And yeah. so- Not for diagnosis or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So with that said, you know, there's no technical benchmark or empirical test to measure the accuracy of their pulse oximeter. So what I've been doing is running uh, the, the measurements on the watch and running them on my, uh, the one I bought from the pharmacy. And Apple's been within the, the acceptable uh, plus or minus error range of the actual finger pulse oximeter. So, uh, there have been times I've run the test and Apple was dead on with the same reading. And there have been times where it was one or two, never more, points away from what this oximeter was showing. Nice. So, okay. So, so it, it appears close. to be effective. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, if, by the way, people watching right now, if check the uh, the chat, I'm going to throw a link in there to Tashaka's uh, YouTube channel uh, because you said you're going to, uh, do some first impressions on that channel, right, of this watch. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get you to do something like that on our channel as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope uh, people who are subscribed to our channel will also go subscribe to yours and, uh, and check out that first impressions when you're able to do that. Um, so I'm curious about any other questions that people might have. We'll go, we'll keep streaming for just a few more minutes. But Tashaka, tell me a little bit more about the Fitness Plus um, while I uh, while I throw up your channel here um, and just remind people, go check out Shaka's channel. And uh, I, I hope you do that. So 
it's important to note that one of the things that Apple and many companies in this age are doing is is moving, not moving away from hardware, but moving the focus away from solely hardware, uh, becoming services companies. Right. Uh, and that's always really been a thing. It's just that previously it was it was B2B is where companies made a lot of money because corporations will pay millions for apps compared to people. So B2B yeah. was always more lucrative, but B2C um, is, is, is obviously a lot more popular now that we've unbundled cable. Haven't made it cheaper necessarily, but now that we've unbundled cable. So Apple has Fitness Plus, which is a new service, which is something that allows you, it, they basically, they've hired all these personal trainers, they've created this whole thing. If you're familiar with Peloton, it's basically Apple's version of Peloton. Um, but it, there's no bike required. You can use it with a treadmill. Um, a lot of their workouts don't require any weights of any kind. You can do it just body weight, or you can incorporate um, you know, hand weights and, and various uh, kettlebells, things like that. And, and, and it looks like they have a very uh, broad, a diverse, first of all, they have a diverse array of trainers. It makes me happy to see uh, fitness trainers that represent our that represent America, fitness sure. trainers of every shade. Uh, so that was beautiful on that level. But um, more importantly, the goal is to work out and and to see fitness trainers who have diverse backgrounds. So if, if like, only they had more that were along my shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yo, I'm in shape. Round is a shape. That's exactly and, right. And so they uh, they so they have fitness trainers that do hip hop, that do yoga, that you know stretching core work, you know, it's kind of typical like you would see at a gym if you went to Crunch Fitness or one of these other mm -hmm. gyms that they have their list of classes. So Fitness Plus works across all your devices. You can watch the videos on your iPad, on your Apple TV, on your MacBook, iMac, uh, across all your devices, your iPhone, and it integrates, and, and this is what Apple does so well. It integrates the activity measurements with what you see on screen. So on your watch, you'll see your, your heart rate. You'll see all this data that you can get in real time while you're exercising. But what they've done is put that up on the screen. Yeah. So your, your watch data is now on the screen and you can see that in front of you. And what the fitness trainers can do is, so let's say your trainer is doing a HIIT workout and they know that at five minutes in, they're going to do a specific move, which is really going to add people's hearts up. So if, what they'll do is they work with the software to at five minutes in, pop up um, the heart rate portion of the data readout so that that's the portion that's in focus. So at that five minute juncture where they're really amping your heart up, you'll see your heart rate go up as the focus of the metrics that you're seeing at that time. So they have some really thoughtful integrations with the Apple Watch itself. And, and, and that's where Apple really, you know, they can do something that has been done because Fitbit has had workout videos available through Fitbit for a while now. But what Apple does is they come along, integrate everything into their ecosystem, and they often will take and refine it to a level that has not been done previously. And so when people say, well, Android had this or Android had that, you know, the, the difference is, is if you're an Apple user and you've got, and you've bought into the Apple ecosystem, is that when you purchase that, when they um, release these products, they their integration is just honestly so well done. And I'm not an Apple fanboy. Anybody that follows my channel knows that I'm a tool. I'm a tool boy. I, I like the best tool for the job. And so I have multiple devices across operating systems, but I have to give credit where credit is due. And that is that Apple's ability to integrate and make things seamless is, is it's bar none. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there. I often uh, sound like I dislike Apple devices, and I don't. I I really I think their devices are awesome. Their their ecosystem is amazing. I just don't have the scratch for that sort of thing. So like and subscribe, everybody. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's uh, let's throw this up here. Martin asked, "What is the cost?" We got to get to this. Last of all, what's the cost of this watch? Let's see, there, there are several watches. And I actually, when we started, I had a sheet with cost in front of me. 
and it's back here. Um, oh, you know, actually, I can grab it. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm pulling okay. it up on their website here as well. So for the Apple Watch, so because they also released the SE, which is their entry level, well, mid level, because we also still now have the Apple Watch Three. So you've right. got the Apple Watch Three, the Apple Watch SE, and the Apple Watch Series Six. That's your three tiers of watches. So for the um, for the SE, uh, or let's start at the bottom tier. The Apple Watch Series Three is now one hundred ninety nine dollars for the standalone GPS unit, $229 for the uh, LTE-enabled unit. For the Apple Watch SE, it's $279 standalone, $30, uh, um, I'm sorry, that's actually, let me go back to the, the uh, Series 3. The Series 3, the two prices I gave you were for the two sizes. So that was for the 38 and 42 millimeters. Uh, it does not have the LTE version. You can only get it with, or am I confusing things? Yeah, I think I've, I've got it here things. on it screen It is, L now. both versions are LTE uh, for the Apple Watch Series 3, because I'm looking at the connectivity, and it uh, shows LTE. So it, it's kind of, on the, the diagram I have, it's actually a little confusing, because they don't actually show GPS and cellular for the right. Series 3. Um, but for the SE, they do show that. And for the GPS only units, the 40 and 40 millimeter are 279, 309 respectively. The GPS with cellular for the SE is 329 or 359 for the 40 and 44 millimeter. And for the Big Daddy watch, the Series 6, for the GPS only, you're going to pay 399 or 429 for GPS only. And then 499 or 529 for uh, cellular for the 40 and 44 millimeter. But keep in mind with the Series 6, you also have uh, different levels of, of finish. So the prices I just quoted you were for the um, stainless, I'm sorry, the aluminum version. The cost does go up when you start talking about the stainless steel model. Here we go. There gold, you go. gold stainless steel with leather link for $749, Tashaka. You know what? I have to tell you. I really like the gold one. Like you said, it's, it's pricey for me, but I really like the 18 karat gold one. That that is a looker. Well, and that I and I I would really like a solid gold toilet, but uh, you know we can't always get the things that we like. People spend money on what is uh, kind of what is their thing, their hobby, and so being a chronophile, I actually have some time pieces which are pricey and so, but they're heirlooms. So I have yeah. a Citizen um, Eco Drive, a ProMaster SST that one day I will give to my, uh, well, one of my sons, a grandson, somebody, you know, because it's that kind of watch. It'll last yeah. longer than I will. So if, you, if you're, so, uh, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> So the last question here from Joker, uh, we're gonna we're gonna end here in just a couple minutes. Uh, is should I buy the Apple Watch if I'm not interested in the fitness side of it? Is there enough other utility, uh, or would it make more sense maybe to go with a more budget option? Um, you know, what what do you think? Excellent question. Um, the budget options in fitness. I'm sorry. The budget options in wearables tend to be fitness oriented. Yeah. So we go cheaper on Fitbits. Well, the, the cheaper Fitbits are fitness oriented. The more expensive Fitbits are more smartwatch oriented. Mm -hmm. So um, if it depends on what you own. Obviously, if you're asking about buying an Apple Watch, if you're not interested in fitness, you're an iPhone user more than likely because um, Apple Watches don't work with anything other than iPhones. Yeah. So should you buy it if you're not interested on the fitness side of it? Absolutely, there are plenty of features of the watch that um, are usable. Uh, the reason that I switched from Android to using an iPhone was because of the Apple Watch a, a few years ago. I, it was the Series 3. I, I reviewed the Series 3 um, over at Fox, and it was so compelling. And this is after having used a ton of Android watches. It was so well, again, integrated with everything that... I moved over to it because it had so many apps available for it. So yes, if you're using just 
the the non-fitness part of it, there are all kinds of apps. If you're a, a freelance worker, you can use Hours Tracker, for example. And when you start working, you can tap your watch and start the count on how on how much how many hours. If you're a freelance writer and you're logging the amount of hours you're spending writing, you can use that from your watch instead of having to pick up a phone or iPad and go into the app. And it's it's a sh quick short tap on your watch. There are so many things that you can actually use and integrate into your life with the watch that if you don't want to pay as much, you can go for the series three and, and get a, a more inexpensive, a $200 version if you go with the uh, 40 millimeter. So uh, should you buy it if you're not interested in the fitness side of it? If you want a wearable and you're looking for a wearable, I absolutely can say that I do think it's absolutely worth it if you're not using it for the fitness. Yeah, from what I understand on the wearables, especially the watch side of things, there are a lot of really great, uh, you know, Fitbits and Samsung's got a good watch and all that. But Apple really has the pinnacle of the smart watches, um, so it's it, you, you get what you pay for in almost every case, right? And this is one of those. Well, it, ultimately, it's culture. So when Apple releases products, it's oh my god, it's Apple, and everybody <laughs> wants to be on the Apple train because they have permeated the cultural zeitgeist. So all the developers make the apps for Apple. Right, first, you know? and, and then maybe yeah. for Android later, yeah. Maybe, and the problem has been, frankly, I've been let down, Android Wear has not kept up. So mm. everybody's making everything for iOS. The other best operating system to me is Tizen, but that's a Korean operating system on Samsung's products, Samsung. and yeah. they don't have as many apps for that. I've played with that. I love it. It's my second favorite watch, um, but there just aren't as many apps on Tizen as there are on I, or watch OS. Yeah. Well, very good. All right, Tashaka, I'm glad we got to uh, get a, a first glance. Hold it up one more time. Let's take a look at that watch. Take a look at the band. And uh, while you're doing that, I just want to say thanks to everybody for tuning in. I have no idea what the thumbnail was that got put up, so I hope it wasn't completely bizarre. Uh, it was probably for one of our old streams or something. <laughs> anyway, but thanks for uh, for popping in uh, so that Tashaka could show this thing off. And again, if you, uh, let's see if I still have your, yeah, your YouTube channel. So anybody in the chat, go check out, uh, go check out Tashaka's YouTube channel as well. Obviously make sure you're, you're subscribed to us, but go subscribe to Tashaka also. And uh, yeah, awesome. So we'll look forward to hearing more about this watch and, and how it interacts with uh, the iPhones and whatnot in your reviews here uh, on our channel as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, since we talked so much about home services on reviews.org, I'm definitely looking forward to having that broader discussion about their new bundles uh, where all their services are all in one place now. Apple, uh, it's called um, Family. Well, uh, uh, family share was for the Apple Watch, mm. but they now have family plans uh, that you can access. So you have individual plans that are bundled and and you also have now family and then family premium uh, uh, where you bundle, where they bundle iCloud, Apple TV Plus, Fitness Plus, mm. and uh, Apple Music all into one service. And you're gonna pay less, obviously bundling them then yeah. you do a la carte. So they did that. It's the uh, the Megazord of uh, Apple services, right? Exactly. It, it totally is. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. And thank you to Shaka. And uh, we're going to cut it off here. We'll see you guys all next time.